The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. This is an opinion-based program. On an all-new Get Real, as the COVID-19 pandemic continues to batter Sri Lanka in a damaging way, scientists, doctors and researchers all agree that the only way out is to vaccinate the population. As of now, only 2% of the population fully vaccinated. The authorities are facing a daunting task in increasing that number to 70% within the end of the year. Diplomatic relations of the government proved to be fruitful from the onset of this pandemic as the president and other officials managed to get the required vaccines firsthand in an efficient manner. Now the task has fallen to the frontline workers in ensuring that we continue to vaccinate Sri Lanka. For insights and analysis, tonight I'm honored to welcome back renowned scientist Professor Nilika Malavige. From Studio 24, with opinions that matter, it's time to get real with Mahesh Jani. And a very good evening, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join me once again on another episode of Get Real, where we discuss issues faced by everyday Sri Lankans. Well, did you get vaccinated? Only managed to get one shot? You got the Sputnik vaccine and now no clue as to when you will get the second one. You got the AstraZeneca vaccine about a month back and I wondered whether you expired in getting the second dose. They're all pertinent questions that need answers. Tonight, I hope to get some of them to you. Early in my opening statement, vaccinating Sri Lanka. Make no mistake, the way out of this pandemic is to get each and every citizen of this country vaccinated. Getting closer to 16 million people vaccinated is a daunting task, but it needs to be done. Today, with only around 2% of the population being vaccinated, there are questions as to whether we can iron out issues pertaining to the vaccination process and move ahead. From the onset, when this pandemic hit, Sri Lankan shows a president requested all political parties to come together so we as a nation can face this adversity together. Not merely utilize this global situation to milk in some petty political mileage. Yep, you guessed it right. That's exactly what the country's opposition did. Milked the situation for a petty political mileage. First, the clueless opposition was Oh no, the government has no plan in keeping Sri Lankans safe. The government brings in a plan and successfully manages it. Then moves on to the next one. Oh no, the government is not bringing in vaccines but merely only concerning about a shaman's tonic and promoting it. Almost overnight, President Gotabe Rajapaksa gives a call to Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and voila, AstraZeneca vaccines in Sri Lanka. And that card also fell for the opposition, jokers like Harin Fernando saying, I will not get a vaccine until the people have been vaccinated. Later on, he went and slowly got the vaccine. That's a different story. Now, that's what they said. Because, you know, uh, you can vaccinate over 16 million people in a snap of the finger, right? For the opposition, that's what they think that can happen. Yes, agree, there were hiccups in the initial stage of the vaccination efforts, but the good thing is when an issue has been identified, the officials move in with a solution to rectify the matter. That's what progress is all about. In each and every step, this government, health officials, frontline staff and all relevant authorities has been on top of things, trying to bring this issue back to a controllable level. But Mahesh, look at the numbers now. Isn't it spiking? True, it is. You want to put the blame somewhere, right? Well then, let's all as a collective of this nation take the blame. 
then our frontline workers has tirelessly worked beyond unimaginable level to curb the first and the second wave. We all forgot that there was a pandemic and come New Year's season, we acted like idiots and now we are looking elsewhere to lay the blame. Of course, the petty p opposition says uh, that the government cannot uh, be um, the government cannot blame the people. Yes, the government, health officials, the military, everyone involved is not blaming the people because they are more busy ensuring the safety of this nation. But I can get real with you for this instance and lay the blame where it belongs. We all waited for the government, if I mean, if we all waited for the government to come and wash our hands, waited for the government to come and wear a mask for us over our face, waited for the government to police us in keeping distance, and when we fail like the petty opposition, we look elsewhere to lay the blame instead of taking steps to do our part. It's really vital. We still need to do our part. If we don't do our part, then we all lose the right to complain. All right, tonight I want to take a scientific approach and get more facts about the number of vaccines that's out there. Are, are these vaccines the same? What's the reality when it comes to the variations of these virus? And does these vaccines hold ground in fighting those variants? Well, a lot of clarification that needs to be addressed. And for that, I will be shortly joined uh, by renowned scientists and the head of the Department of Immunology and Molecular Medicine uh, at the Faculty of Medical Science at the University of Sri Lanka. Professor Nilika Malavike. But before that, well, 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 guess who's back? Mr. Dani Dubitanavasam is here to get us the facts, the fiction, and everything in between on tonight's real story. Good evening, Dani Good to see you and welcome back. Thank you, Mahesh. Great to be back as well. Mahesh, a surge in COVID 19 cases within the third wave has resulted in a quite challenging situation for all Sri Lankans. The key strategy of the government has been to inoculate parts of the population that have seen a spike in cases. Over 2.3 million people have already received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine here in Sri Lanka. Army Commander General Shavendra Silva stated recently that Sri Lanka plans to successfully contain the third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic and vaccinate its entire population by the end of 2021 or early 2022. The response strategy is based on firstly breaking the chain of spread Secondly, curbing the spread by separating the infected from uninfected and isolating the exposed and vulnerable population. Thirdly, treatment of infected personnel, minimizing the losses of lives. Fourthly, minimizing citizen suffering from associated losses of earnings, travel restrictions, and difficulties to access medical and other necessities. Fifthly, achieving the population immunity through vaccination, which is the accepted best mean of defense against the virus. Sri Lanka currently administers three types of vaccines. AstraZeneca under the COVID Shield brand manufactured in India, the Chinese Sinopharm and the Russian Sputnik V vaccine, whereas the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine has been approved for emergency use. Sri Lanka received 1,264,000 doses of the Covishield branded version of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine manufactured by the Serum Institute of India. Half a million of these were donated by the Indian government, with another half directly purchased by the State Pharmaceutical Corporation from the Serum Institute of India. The remaining 264,000 was received through the World Health Organization led COVAX facility. Over 353,000 people have received the second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Strong signs of foreign relations that have been built by the current administration were exhibited throughout the handling of the pandemic and especially in the acquisition of the COVID-19 vaccines. Sri Lanka has got a positive response from Japan to a request by President Gotabe Rajapaksha for 600,000 AstraZeneca coronavirus vaccines. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has made a similar request from Australia which was well received by the Australian government. The AstraZeneca jab is thought to have around 63% efficacy according to the W. WHO. As per official data, Sri Lanka has received a total of 3.1 million Sinopharm vaccines so far since the arrival of the first batch of 600,000 doses in late March this year. Sri Lanka began administering first doses on May 8. Authorities have started giving the second dose from June 8. The Ministry of Health has decided to administer Chinese-made Sinopharm vaccine to pregnant mothers from the 9th of June 2021. The WHO estimates the vaccine's efficacy for symptomatic and hospitalized cases of COVID-19 to be at 79%. President Gotabe Rajapaksha managed to fast-track the Sinopharm approval process for Sri Lanka and as a result, the whole world, after contacting the WHO. 
The cabinet has also approved the local production of the Sinopharm vaccine, which is to be conducted under the guidance of the State Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Corporation. The first batch of the Sputnik V vaccine containing 15,000 doses was delivered in early May. Russia delivered the second batch of Sputnik V jabs containing 50,000 doses to Sri Lanka on May 28th, in keeping with the purchase order placed by the State Pharmaceutical Corporation to boost the island's inoculation drive. The Russian Direct Investment Fund announced that the Sputnik V efficacy is at 95%. Sri Lanka has also approved the emergency use of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. According to the WHO, the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine against COVID-19 has an efficacy of 95%. Sri Lanka plans to purchase 900,000 doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine by July this year, alongside the import of 5 million doses of Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine in total this year. Sri Lanka is the first country in South Asia to approve the Pfizer vaccine. In comparing the vaccines, most vaccinations can be stored under normal refrigeratory conditions, especially the Sinopharm and AstraZeneca vaccine, which can be stored between 2 degrees Celsius to 8 degrees Celsius. Multinational companies and foreign countries have extended support towards Sri Lanka's effort in combating COVID-19 as a result of intelligent multilateral practices undertaken by the executive branches of the current administration. The government of Sri Lanka and the World Bank signed a 80.5 million US dollar additional financing to help Sri Lanka access and distribute COVID-19 vaccines and and to strengthen the country's vaccination system and pandemic response. The country managed to deal with the first two waves of the pandemic quite effectively. The third wave seems to have affected more people, primarily due to lax preventive methods undertaken by the general public. Over to you, Mahish. Well, Dani Dubitanavasam with the real story there. Thank you very much. We're going to take a short commercial break, but when we return, Professor Nilikam Malavige will be here. This is Get Real. Be right back. And now to get some context into the conversation we are having. Uh, well, prior to that, I just wanted to mention uh, everyone that there is such a responsibility, which I also uh, told you all uh, earlier on. Uh, you and I have a massive responsibility when it comes to fighting COVID. Uh, we cannot be sitting at home thinking that it's somebody else's responsibility, it's the health workers' responsibility, it's the, it's the government's responsibility. Everybody has to pitch in because we did that in the first wave. Look where it got us. Uh, right now, the, the, the solution at that particular point was to completely lock down the country. But then Sri Lanka is not a country where we can afford to do that on a regular basis because there are people who suffer on a daily basis because of this. Right now, the government has opted for travel restrictions. What does that mean? It means exactly that restriction of travel which means when you were asked uh, pretty much you know to do that what it means is for you you can go to your work go back home all the parties the trips and everything that no longer is valid because that is where we need to stop the spread the gathering uh, if somebody is uh, infected they might not know that they are infected so they would come and pretty much give it to you, give it to a person. You might not suffer, but your loved one, the elderly people who are in your homes will definitely suffer. So that is why what the government has opted to do right now. So we need to understand this. The government has not gone for a lockdown, which means complete no, no uh, movement whatsoever. It is a travel restriction. In a way, like, you know, most of you all, you know, if you get caught to your wife doing something very bad, uh, pretty much she would be every time asking, where are you? Where are you? You don't exactly have the freedom to go wherever you want. So that is also a type of a travel restriction. <laughs> That's the kind the government is now uh, asking you all to do. Make sure that you all go to the place that you all have to go and then get back home. Uh, we need to put facts. We need to give you facts and make sure that uh, you understand these facts. I'm sure you would have heard a lot of scientific terms running around on social media, you know, a lot of fake pundits are trying to give a lot of uh, information. 
Let's get it from the person who actually can talk about it. Professor Neelka Malavige, the head of uh, the Department of Immunology and uh, Molecular Medicine at the Faculty of Medical Science, uh, University uh, of uh, Sri Jayadhanapur. Uh, welcome back. Uh, thank you very much. I know you're really busy, but you still uh, uh, took some time to come and educate our viewers. Uh, thank you for that. Now, Professor, um, lots of conversations about these variants. Nobody understands what it means. Uh, um, you know, you th you, people say there's a variant, there's, you know, there's this new one is coming, Indian one is coming, the UK one is coming. Now, I, I later on also want to take your, uh, uh, you know, views about the fact that we went and infected uh, Melbourne. <laughs> All that, you know, everything is there. So what is, what is, what is currently in Sri Lanka, Ryan? Is that a new thing that is infecting all of us? Yes, uh, so I think uh, actually when we are, uh, it's uh, not a surprise that people are confused by variants. I think this is the first time that everybody is hearing this word called yeah. variants. I mean, people heard about measles, chicken pox, uh, the flu, uh, but the general public never heard the term variant. So actually all those, a lot of uh, influenza viruses also have variants, mm. although we haven't spoken about it. So what's so special about COVID is actually, it's uh, uh, caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus and viruses mutate. The reason viruses mutate is to make them more capable of transmitting uh, and to possibly escape uh, vaccine-induced immunity and po hopefully to reinfect uh, people who have already had COVID. In the virus's point of view, that's what it wants to do. So then you, you get all these type of variants emerging and you have hundreds of uh, COVID uh, variants. Mm. Uh, but all of most of them are no different to each other. They are just a name or, or, or a number or something like that. Uh, the WHO has named four variants that are called variants of concern because they are dangerous. Uh, so we have, uh, they're called alpha, beta. Yeah. Uh, uh, they changed uh, the name. They, they, they changed the name. <laughs> so it's, it's, I know it's even more confusing now. But that is not to stop a country being stigmatized. Yeah. So the UK variant is the alpha variant, the South African one, the beta variant, uh, the Brazilian one, gamma, and the Indian one, which uh, emerged most recently, is the uh, delta variant. And uh, so these variants are called variants of concern because either they're able to transmit more uh, rapidly, like the Alpha or the UK variant, or the Delta, the Indian variant, which is even more transmissible than the UK variant. And then you've got the South African and the Brazilian mm. variant, uh, which are able to reinfect people who've already had COVID or escape vaccine immunity. Uh, so apart from this- is, is that still valid? Uh, yeah, so it's like this uh, now, coming to vaccines, because now when I say uh, escape vaccine-induced mm. immunity, that uh, rings alarm yeah, bells exactly. in a lot of people. Okay, so we are taking vaccines, won't these vaccines work? So all vaccines work against any variant. But vaccines are there to protect you against severe infection and death. Now, if I can ask you this question, and if you can give me your honest answer, how many times have you got influenza? Countless number of times. Yeah, but do you know the last time you got it? Um, I think uh, pri before COVID, because when COVID hit, uh, I was making sure that, you know, best practices were maintained. So actually, I didn't get it for about a year or so. Yeah, so, so but you've had several episodes of, yeah, of, course. Uh, of the flu, influenza. So, uh, so if somebody coughs in office, I go and take some antibiotics because yeah. I'm very sure that I'm going to get it. Yes, yeah, so, so, so basically, if you ask any person, when did you get the flu, they sort of can't remember. And if you ask the question, how many times you have had flu, yeah. again, they can't remember. But we have to remember that in 1918 and 1919, uh, influenza uh, caused a huge pandemic, resulting in about 50 million deaths in the world. So that is, uh, com you know, when you combine the deaths in World War mm -hmm. One and World War Two, the number of deaths caused by influenza those days was so much more. Okay, yeah. so uh, so influenza those days was nothing like COVID these days. It just kills 50 million. <laughs> okay, yeah. so uh, and, and, and is that where uh, you know in, in in countries like the United States uh, there's something called you the, know, flu, the flu shot? Yes. So yes. that is that yeah, is so, so the, because the influenza virus changes so much. Uh, the flu shot is given in colder countries for susceptible people. Now, people like you and me, who appear to be quite healthy, we do get influenza from time to time, but uh, we, uh, and uh, we, are, we are fine. So likewise, these vaccines, uh, what they're meant to do is to make COVID like that. 
I mean, sometimes when we get influenza, we do we do get fever and, mm. and so on. But most of the time, we just get a sore throat, a runny nose, and and it's not bad. I want to dive uh, uh, a little bit uh, onto you know when you get a vaccine and, and talk uh, and talk in detail with regard to vaccine. But before that, I want to talk about this uh, variant. Now. Um, there is this conversation in Sri Lanka, you know, UK variant is here, Indian variant is here, it, it, you know, the uh, Indian variants variant is also here, you know, all yeah. these kinds of conversation. A layman who's uh, sitting at home has no clue what you're talking about or what, what wh how does, how do they get affected uh, uh, by these variants? Are they like, you know, more prone towards it? And in case, you know, um, let's say you got COVID prior. Um, and you are perfectly okay, you went through the 14 days or, or more and you, you were cured, you went back home. Now, that person again, okay, there's a variant, am I going to get that thousand now? Yes, yes, so, so, so that's a worry, isn't it? I mean, we've had quite a few people infected with COVID in Sri Lanka, so obviously you don't want to get COVID again for so many reasons. And uh, so some, uh, so co immunity due to COVID is, uh, we don't know how long it lasts for. So for instance, we know that if you get measles, you are very unlikely to get re infected with the measles mm. virus. I mean, you get lifelong immunity. You, you're not going to have measles again. But for COVID, people don't know how long your natural immunity lasts for. Uh, so f f sometimes it might be just six months. Sometimes it might be a few years. So people actually don't know uh, that yet. And there have been very rare instances, not a lot, a few instances where people have had reinfections with COVID again in South Africa and Brazil. But in such instances, it hasn't been severe. It's like you getting the mm, flu. The, clue, uh, 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 the flu, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, it's not that bad. So, but coming to these variants, you have the UK variant called Alpha, you have the Indian variant called Delta. So right now, the massive epidemic we are seeing in Sri Lanka right now is because of the UK variant. And if we go back to the second wave, which uh, started early October and sort of continued till end of January, uh, uh, February. Uh, I mean, we didn't see this, right? I mean, uh, we had COVID, but most of the people who got COVID were fine. Mm. And our hospitals were not full. Yeah. People did not get severe disease. People did not die like uh, in, in, su in, in such large numbers as we're seeing now. That is because uh, that was the original SARS-CoV-2 variant that was circulating in Sri Lanka, just uh, slightly different. But this UK variant, the, uh, as we call it, the Alpha variant, the WHO has named it as a variant of concern because it is a dangerous variant. And you can see with your, like it's unfolding right in, uh, in front of us, isn't it? What the Alpha variant is doing. It is causing more severe disease. It is spreading uh, fast. I mean, COVID does spread faster, mm. but but not as what we're seeing right now. So the Delta variant is even worse than the Alpha variant. It spread faster, but vaccines protect against all variants. Uh, before I get into vaccines, uh, this there was a conversation earlier on when I think the first wave, the second wave came, uh, saying that people above 50 or, or people who have ailments like long-term ailments, uh, they are the ones who are vulnerable. Now, these variants, how do they uh, operate? Uh, is anyone vulnerable? Yeah, so so it doesn't it doesn't make any difference. Uh, it's still, if you look at the, uh, I mean, right now we have a uh, significant more people dying in the third wave than the second wave. There is no difference between whatever variant. It is the older people and people with comorbidities, like people with diabetes, obesity, heart disease, uh, that are that are actually dying even in during this epidemic. Uh, so so whatever the variant. It is all the people who are more prone to die, and this is why uh, vaccines are, uh, all the people are prioritized to get vaccines, because if you stop people dying and getting severe disease, then you've actually uh, won the race quite a bit, isn't it? I mean, if, you, if people don't die and don't mm -hmm. get severe disease, then, I mean, that's why we are worried about this. Uh, let's talk about vaccines. Now, um, initially when we, we brought in vaccines, uh, uh, we had AstraZeneca and that started being deployed all uh, in, in Colombo. Lots of people got it. Now, uh, you were told when you got the first one, you have to get it in another 12 weeks. So a time period was stipulated. We passed that time period. Now it is actually coming very close to the, the tail end of things. Uh, people are worried. Um, but there is the, you know, three million, four million Sino farm is there, you know, that is there available in the country. You now it is getting vaccinated, it's vaccinating a lot of other people. Then we have the Sputnik uh, one, uh, you know, lots of vaccines. 
why do we have various kinds of vaccine and not have one vaccine? Because if you take like when you were born, you were given a, a particular vaccine, we don't know by the brand name or any, any of yeah, that. Yeah. So why are we having four or five kinds of vaccines? Uh, I mean, like, do they have different, uh, you know, Am I supposed to get all five? <laughs> because, you know, maybe they're having various kinds of, uh, uh, you know, defense against uh, the virus. Am I supposed to get everything? Or what is the story here? Yes. So if you look at childhood vaccines, every year a particular number of kids are born and then you have vaccine to uh, vaccinate them. So you only, at a given time, in a given year, you only vaccinate a small proportion of your population. But here we had COVID where it was causing devastation in all countries. So several uh, companies, universities, research institutes came forward to develop any vac uh, a vaccine for COVID. And of course, when you start developing vaccines, you don't know which vaccines mm. work. So the Chinese vaccines are the traditional type of vaccines, the inactivated vaccines. And then you had the brand new type of vaccines called the mRNA vaccines by Pfizer and Moderna. Then again, for the first time in the world, you had these vector vaccines, uh, the AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, and Sputnik. So it's because uh, so many uh, uh, research institutes came forward to develop different types of vaccines. Uh, because you didn't know what was going to work. And the other thing is that it's really important that all these, we have all these different vaccines because we need to, uh, our global population is like 7.6 billion, I believe. And uh, if, we, if we vaccinate the adults, uh, we are talking about at least 4.5 billion, I would imagine. So to, dev to vaccinate 4.5 billion people, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. how do you uh, manufacture vaccines like that? So what we are seeing right now is, uh, 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 you know, a problem between supply that's, and demand. That's understandable, but what is the, like if you take the Pfizer vaccine, uh, Pfizer was not here yet, uh, but uh, uh, will come soon, uh, AstraZeneca. Now, let's say a person who got AstraZeneca maybe very early in May uh, is very scared because, you know, the supply is not here, but then there is Sino, uh, Sinovac, uh, which I would say, okay, it's a vaccine, so let me get that. I got the first dose from that uh, yes. other vaccine, but you know, since this is available, I'll take this. What's the risk there? Is there a risk, or th yes. can anybody go and get any vaccine yes. twice? So, so th that's a good question, and I think a very timely question. We have like 600,000 people mm. very worried uh, of not having the second dose, and in in other countries where there. Everybody has a short supplies, except the very developed ones who have bought all the vaccines, of course. And in the UK and several countries, they did this mix and match, uh, uh, vaccine mix and match thing, uh, where they mixed uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine with either Pfizer or Moderna. And this, that data is out showing that uh, mixing and matching AstraZeneca with Pfizer and Moderna are fine. So if you've had the AstraZeneca and if Moderna or Pfizer is available, it makes sense to take it because the data is there. There have been trials conducted about AstraZeneca combining with Sputnik. Uh, the trial results are not out, but both AstraZeneca and Sputnik, uh, the first dose, are adenoviral vectors, and so it makes uh, scientifically makes sense to uh, combine them, uh, mix and match. Uh, scientifically or theoretically, there doesn't seem to be any issue at all. Uh, we would know the trial results hopefully soon, and I believe uh, the Ministry of Health in Sri Lanka is also going to conduct a trial quickly to, to because you don't you have to do something about the 600,000 who have only got one dose. And then, of course, whether uh, the Sinopharm can be given uh, to individuals who got AstraZeneca. Again, theoretically, it sounds okay. What's, 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 like, let's, die, like, when, yeah. when it goes into your body, let's yeah. say you, you have a shot of AstraZeneca. Yeah. Some people, um, uh, you know, experience fever. Yeah. Uh, some pe people got sick. They were, uh, you know, bedridden for, for some time, and then they were okay. Now they read from here and there saying you have around 80% immunity, 70%, whatever the number. Now, uh, it also works in your head saying there is a second dose, you need to get the second dose. So the moment you are, you know, getting close to the expiry date, the day that you're supposed to get the second dose, it works in your head thinking, okay, hang on, am I losing the immunity? Uh, was this the immunity given by the first two dose of vaccine for a particular period of time? Why do you need a second one if this, you know, if this is a vaccine and usually we know about vaccines for lifelong vaccines? What's the story there? Yeah, so, so definitely for the AstraZeneca, as far as AstraZeneca is concerned, immunity is, uh, you have good immunity till about 12 weeks. 
and after that there are not enough data to say after that what happens so obviously you absolutely need to have a second dose so going back to other vaccines that people know of like you have the MMR which lots yeah. of kids are being given so if you only have one dose of MMR uh, or let's say one dose of the chickenpox vaccine uh, you can get chickenpox but it's very mild uh, in, in a milder form but to completely prevent uh, mumps, measles or rubella or chicken pox, you need to have the second dose. So it, the same principle applies for COVID. Uh, with one dose of AstraZeneca, you do have some protection, uh, but you definitely need the second dose. Uh, to, to seal the deal. Uh, to, seal <laughs> to, 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 to prevent infection, yes. The, uh, but now we know next year also, we have to get the vaccine again. No, uh, we, we don't necessarily know that. You see, uh, we, we don't necessarily know that uh, everybody needs to get the second dose, uh, a booster dose next year. Uh, it could be something like the influenza, uh, the flu shot, because we know that every year new influenza mm -hmm. strains come up. And so every, every year, those in cold climates, uh, not uh, the, the old individuals and those with other ailments do get the flu shot, but not everybody, you see. So when it comes to COVID, we don't know uh, when new variants come in, when other variants come in, whether everybody needs to get a booster shot or whether it's particular, particularly just high risk people or older people like what is happening for the flu. So those things we still don't know. Uh, maybe we do, maybe we, maybe everybody doesn't need to get it. Uh, so, so these are questions yeah. uh, that we need to sort of don't know right now. Let's take a short commercial break. A lot more to discuss uh, with Professor Neil Gamalavige. Uh, we're talking about the vaccines. Uh, what, it, what does it mean? You know, mixing vaccines. What Professor, you know, gave you a proper answer. Still, the data is not out there, but studies have been done. So, what you need to do is go and get vaccinated if you have not got vaccinated. Uh, we'll take a short commercial break. You're watching Get Your Work. with Professor Neil Kam Malavige uh, with regard to the vaccines uh, that, that is taking place right now in Sri Lanka and we are trying to figure out, um, you know, a lot of confusion with regard to the data that is out there. So trying to iron those out, give you facts over fear and get you to understand what you should do in case you are still not vaccinated. Uh, Professor Neil Kam Malavige is the head of the Department of uh, Immunology and Molecular Medicine at the Faculty of Medical Science at the... Uh, uh, University of uh, Shri Javadanapura. Professor, let's hypothetical think I got COVID, I got cured, I'm at home. Should I go get the vaccine? Yes, because uh, like I mentioned earlier, we don't know how long immunity to COVID lasts for. Uh, for measles, infections like measles, we know that once you have measles, you're not going to get measles again. But for COVID, we don't know that. And actually in some countries, and even in Sri Lanka, uh, in, in countries like South Africa and Brazil, uh, more people who have had COVID have got infected because they've got these uh, variants, uh, the Brazilian and the South African variant. In Sri Lanka as well, uh, very few people have got reinfected uh, people who have had COVID previously. So it is important to get vaccinated uh, to, to prevent getting COVID again. So that is, uh, and uh, the WHO has recommended after you have got COVID, after you feel better, uh, one month after feeling better, uh, then you can go and get the COVID vaccine. There are a lot of people sitting at home. Uh, I mean, you, you would know uh, the rate that diabetes, heart issues, uh, you know, those things are now prevalent in Sri Lanka is really high. Uh, they're scared. Uh, should I get the vaccine because I have uh, diabetes? Should I get the vaccine because I have heart uh, issues? Do I, should I get the vaccine because I have kidney issues? What is your uh, recommendation? Yes, so actually when you look at the data, uh, now let's talk about people who get uh, severe disease and the people who die. Uh, uh, we had that data since 2020 January, like who were the people who were most likely to die? Who are the people who are most likely to get severe disease? And they are the people who are older and the people who have other ailments like heart disease, diabetes. Uh, this is pretty much your immune uh, system is... Uh, yes, and kidney disease or cancers. So it is really important 
that those individuals should take the vaccine. So if, you, if you're talking about a 25-year-old or a 30-year-old versus a 65-year-old with diabetes, uh, that 65-year-old with diabetes is so much more likely to get CV disease and die than a 30-year-old. Even, a, uh, let's say, I mean, uh, you said, uh, you know, 50, 60, but a lot of diabetic patients are now around 20, 25. Yes, so, so, so what about uh, them? So, so when we look at the Sri Lankan data uh, and other con uh, data from other countries, apart from old age, the other reason that people die are having these ailments. So, so this is why the vaccine should be prioritized to be given to all the individuals and pre people with diabetes, heart disease or uh, uh, kidney disease and they should get the vaccine and they are the people who must get it. We were talking about, uh, you know, two doses but then we heard uh, fr uh, from Johnson & Johnson they have created a vaccine, just a single dose, what's the difference there? Yes, uh, so uh, uh, they have done clinical trials on their single dose vaccine so it's a, uh, a vector vaccine, an adenovirus 26 vaccine and so their clinical trials do show that this vaccine very effectively does prevent severe disease and death and to uh, uh, about 67 percent also uh, efficacious in preventing symptomatic illness. So that one shot seemed to work uh, and I think there everybody is seeing how long the immunity lasts whether one day you need a booster shot in, in such individuals. But the Johnson & Johnson vaccine does work, it does prevent infection, uh, symptomatic infection in about 67%. You're sitting in the board which recommends which vaccines to uh, get uh, for Sri Lankans. Uh, the authority comes from, from that particular committee. Uh, how, wh what are you looking at? Uh, you know, you have a range of vaccines and right now Sinopharm seems to be the one that is more available. Are you all looking at the availability of it or are you all looking at, uh, you know, the e effectiveness of those vaccines and recommending the, uh, to the people, you know, get that? Because there is always another, another uh, uh, you know, I want to get the best one. I don't want to get the one that is available. I want to get the best one. And right now, everybody is saying the best one is Sputnik. Or, uh, uh, yeah, I think Sputnik and, and Pfizer. Pfizer is not yet in the country. Sputnik is on, on a very low level. Now, uh, what do you have to tell uh, those people? Like, you know, is there a better one? Or are these all okay? Because, you know, you're sitting there and, in the, and nobody wants to get the, the lowest yes, one. I, I understand that perfectly, yes. So if I can explain exactly what happens where I, I sit at, that is the uh, advisory committee of the National Medi Medicinal Regulatory Authority. So we don't recommend vaccines. Uh, when vaccine dossiers come to us, uh, the number one thing we evaluate is safety. You see, because uh, you're giving a vaccine to healthy people. Now, if you want to get a vaccine, you uh, the vaccine is to prevent you from getting severe COVID or symptomatic COVID. But you're healthy and you don't have COVID. So the most important thing that we look at is the safety of a vaccine because safety is number one. Then you go to efficacy and so on. Uh, but coming to, so what we evaluate is, is what the government gives us, okay? Uh, uh, saying, okay, we plan to get down these vaccines. Please look at the dossier and see if it is suitable for Sri Lanka. We, uh, nobody in our committee actually uh, thinks about what vaccines to get and so on. But coming to the question is are certain vaccines better than the others? The, the best vaccine is the vaccine you can get first and I'll explain. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, so uh, I'll explain that. Now when you look at efficacy, uh, sometimes it's difficult to compare the efficacy between different vaccines because these were given in different countries and how they were evaluated were very different and the variants that were circulating in those countries were different so the vaccine efficacy would be different so based on that data it's, it's difficult to sort of directly c compare uh, vaccines with each other so but having said that uh, all vaccines which are which have been recommended by the who do have very good efficacy rates and and all of them do very significantly prevent severe disease and death, which is, I think, the most uh, important, important thing. thing, thing and, yeah. uh, and all the vaccines uh, that Sri Lanka has, has got so far do very effectively prevent severe disease and death according to the data. 
uh, that means everything that you all have put through through the advisory board uh, you recommend like there is no question about which one you get get a vaccine is what's get important a, uh, get a vaccine because how we evaluate is based on how the uh, the manufacturer and the developer gives the large dossiers about the safety efficacy and all that so we but do you all do testing here no we, we don't we, I mean that's impossible right I mean how do you test each and every vaccine so the uh, and even for other measles mumps rubella vaccines they are uh, evaluated based on the data provided by the manufacturer and the developer so what you go through is the data they provide and uh, the scientific data they provide yeah professor uh, there's another question now when you say that if we are not doing testing here on on let's say you know a sample of Sri Lankans or whatever whether this will work or not now all these vaccines were sampled and tested in those countries let's say one which is done in uh, the AstraZeneca one or, or the Pfizer one which which was sampled in the United States now people in the United States uh, the Caucasian male it has a different structure when it comes to the how, how they're built you take like for a simple example I, I learned the fact that the power of a pa uh, like a panadol or, or, or a, a panadine which is given to them it should only be given like half of it to a Sri Lankan because it's so powerful to them there and we might even go beyond so uh, how do you choose you know this is safe for Sri Lankans based on on we are Asians we we, we have a different structure it is being approved there in uh, America but bringing that down here how do you how what are the things that you're yeah, looking that's, that's a good question so I won't talk about Panadol and I'll talk about vaccine so there are genetical differences as we all know uh, between Caucasians Asians and, and, and of course size differences yeah. as, as we would know so none of these vaccines were just tested in UK or Europe they were tested in uh, South Africa where you have uh, you know like different okay. ethnicity they were tested in certain countries in Asia and they were also tested in uh, Latin America so it was not just one population but having said that uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine that uh, if you look at the areas tested been tested it is in Europe America and Brazil which have Caucasians you're, you're very <laughs> right to ask that question so but it is a large very very wide uh, variety of people Latin America Europe and and, and uh, in uh, US also you, ha you do have Asians and, and all these type of people and when we but it as you say it is really important for us mm -hmm. to also keep an eye on what is going on and when the AstraZeneca was given to Sri Lanka we did evaluate the immune responses in Sri Lankans as well the healthcare workers and uh, so our data is out there for people to see. We, uh, it's all out in the web, we share our data. And similar to Caucasians, our individuals also respond beautifully uh, same. Uh, same type of responses. Yeah. Uh, before we go in for a uh, commercial break, very quickly, uh, Professor, uh, have you a look at the Johnson Johnson uh, vaccine for the single shot, or, or what? So the, the dossier, ha so the dossier has not been sent to Sri Lanka. I don't know if Sri Lanka is entertaining Johnson and Johnson as well. Uh, that I don't know. The, but the government sends, we look at. All right, let's take a short commercial break. I'm in conversation uh, with Professor Neil Kamalavige with regard to vaccines, uh, the variants of COVID, and to give you more information so you would be educated and take an informed decision. You're watching the film. Real, Professor Nilika Malavige, the uh, head of the Department of Immunology and Molecular Medicine at uh, the uh, Faculty of Medical Science at the uh, uh, University of Sri Jarad here. Uh, we've been talking about vaccines and variants of COVID. Um, very recently, I got uh, a text message from our newsroom itself saying that apparently uh, the Melbourne outbreak uh, in Australia, where there is a large population of Sri Lankans living there, was the result of a Sri Lankan uh, going there and infecting uh, people in Melbourne, whereas they were pretty much doing okay and almost about to come out of the lockdowns and the whole scenario. And we, uh, someone from here, went and infected and put everybody back in, <laughs> you know, back inside their homes. What's the truth there? Because I understand 
he's not a Sri Lankan at all. There is no Sri Lankan aspect of it, even though the media keeps harping on the fact that uh, there's a Sri Lankan guy coming up and infecting Melbourne people. Yes, uh, so, so he's not a Sri Lankan. You, you have gone through this, per, you know, yes. the data of this yes, person, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. can talk. Yes, uh, so, so, so uh, it, it is, I can confirm it's not a Sri Lankan. Uh, it is a, a foreign national going, who went through the Sri Lankan airport got on board of a Sri Lankan airline flight because you have tra mm. it's a transit passenger in other words uh, who went to Melbourne and was found to be infected with the Delta variant. Now I think uh, because the Delta variant or the so-called Indian variant yeah, is, is prevalent in so many countries in South Asia and uh, in India, Bangladesh, uh, Maldives, Nepal, I mean you just look at the, uh, our whole South Asian area, I mean it's just the case numbers are increasing and not just South Asia, just look like Thailand, Vietnam, which were COVID yeah. free, I mean they were doing beautiful earlier, but because of this in introduction of the Delta variant, they're not doing so well. And even Singapore, uh, they have got, gone into a lockdown because of this Indian variant. So, and if you look at the uh, Singapore story, that's quite a sad story, where the virus went into the community, the Delta variant, through fully vaccinated individuals. Mm. So, uh, so this is something I want to stress, that you think once you're vaccinated, you won't be transmitting infection. If you are vaccinated, you are protected. So I am vaccinated at As the an moment. Individual. Yes. So I am vaccinated at this moment, so I am protected. So that doesn't mean that you are protected. You see, if you are not vaccinated, so I could that be That means the virus can still be in, in you, you and you'll and be transmitted. Uh, and you, I can infect you. So that is exactly what happened in Singapore, where the airport uh, workers or were fully vaccinated. They had Pfizer or Moderna, the vaccines that people believe are the best. And they trans did transmit the Delta variant home. So in America, uh, once they got into a, a, a sizable number of vaccinating people, they said, take off your masks. You don't have to have masks. You can go back into partying. You can do that. Is that a recommendation you give? It's like this. So that, that, that has caused a lot of controversy in the States as well, whether it's the right thing to do or not. Um, if, if there are two fully vaccinated individuals because uh, every vaccinated individual is protected from severe disease. It is unlikely that two fully vaccinated individuals will pass infection among themselves. But they can pass infection to, to unvaccinated individuals. Uh, that can happen. So when you've got a large proportion of individuals vaccinated, let's say like 60%, 70% or 80%, then the vast majority of, of adults would be protected and you wouldn't be transmitting infection. The likelihood is less. So uh, I don't know, maybe uh, US thought that it, yeah. that's in outdoor situations where in outdoor situations uh, the transmission is less. It's, it's closed environments that the transmission is more. I want to talk about again, uh, you know, uh, about this Melbourne uh, incident. You know, you said uh, he's a transit passenger from Sri Lanka, uh, got into one of our aircrafts and went to Melbourne and did the damage. It begs the question, is our airport safe? Uh, what was, uh, did he get it from our airport? Did he get it in, when he was in Colombo? And did he carry it from Colombo to Melbourne? So what's the story there? Yeah, that's a good question actually. So uh, as you know, we've been doing a lot of sequencing and we've been doing as much as sequencing as possible. So as far, uh, so our last sequencing, uh, we put the report out on the 9th of June and uh, that was for wider, the viruses that were there until 3rd of June. So as of 3rd of June, Okay, we did not see the Delta or the Indian variant in the community in Sri Lanka as of 3rd of June. But we know, as I, as I just said, all the countries around Sri Lanka have the Indian variant or the Delta variant. I mean, massive epidemics due to that. You mean there is no leak of the Indian variant here in Sri Lanka? Uh, as of 3rd of June. Uh, we know it's 14th of June, so things could be different. So we are currently, I mean, we sequence uh, in a very regular basis, because we know that the fi there's a, there are a lot of uh, things that happen in, out in the sea. The fishermen communicate mm -hmm. with each other. There are other routes that uh, people and goods come into Sri Lanka. People exchange things uh, in, in the sea. Uh, so, so there are a lot of avenues that uh, a virus can come to Sri Lanka. So although Sri Lanka didn't have the Indian variant until 3rd of June, since then, this uh, person passed Sri Lanka before. Oh that. yeah, yeah. He, that was eighth of May. So that that means uh, that person actually uh, he didn't get it from Sri Lanka. He, he couldn't have got it from Sri Lanka. Yes. Yeah. So uh, finally, doctor, you know, 
y'all are not only studying what's happening right now, y'all are studying the, the path of this virus where, where would, I mean, are we seeing uh, light at the end of the tunnel? Are we, are we actually looking at uh, a time where all this would, you know, be a story of yesterday? Uh, I know y'all are studying uh, on that. What is your professional take? You know, where is this virus? Like, we thought by the time vaccine comes in, gone. We will be okay. Yes. So, yes. So, it's like this. Uh, until a vast majority of people are vaccinated, when vast majority are vaccinated, yes, it will be gone. But we know that a vast majority are not yet vaccinated. So until a vast majority of people are vaccinated, we have to take these precautions so to prevent transmission. Because the more the virus transmit, the more ability you are giving it to, rep to replicate. And the more virus replicates, the more it gets muted. And the more it mutates, you get more variants. So to prevent variants emerging, the most important thing is to prevent the transmission. So until the vast majority of, of individuals in any country, so just because US vaccinates or Sri Lankan vaccinate, it doesn't eradicate this problem from the world. Because we know that with the international mm -hmm. travel, uh, just cannot, because yeah. one country uh, achieving fully vaccination is not going to prevent anything. So once a large proportion of the world is vaccinated, then uh, we can see this going away. But at least as far as Sri Lanka is, is concerned, once a vast majority of population is, is uh, immunized, then we'll be okay. But until such time, uh, we know that people die. Uh, and the more it is transmitted, as I said, more you, you are giving more opportunity for variants to emerge. And we don't want uh, variants emerging more and more. We've got enough trouble as it is. Yeah. So we just need to hang in there for a little bit more. What does that mean? What does that mean? You know, what is anybody who's watching out there? What is their responsibility? What do you recommend that? Yeah, they so, so I, I know it's hard for everybody. And it, it's not just about being hard at home. I mean, we know that because of the current uh, restrictions we take, it's the poor people who really yeah. suffer a lot. I mean, the daily wage earners, they don't have any money. True that all these vegetable carts are going around, they don't have money to buy. So it's the poor people who really suffer, and the kids and the university students. I mean, online, does it? Uh, I mean, <laughs> does it <laughs> really work? Yeah. And what about the vast majority of kids in Sri Lanka don't have facilities for online at all. They don't have the relevant devices or the money to uh, pay the internet bills. And, and the vast majority of schools in Sri Lanka do not have facilities to conduct yeah. online Got sessions. It, yeah. So it, it, it affects Sri Lanka in a huge way than, than developed countries because of the restrictions that need to be imposed when transmission happens. So I think it is individual responsibility yes. uh, to make sure that if, if you don't want the poor to suffer, because we want to open, uh, I mean, I think the lockdowns are really hurting yes, the poor. Is. And the kids can't go to school. So f to enable our kids to go to school and the poor people, I mean, yeah. they're starving actually. So to, to enable them to sort of get back to life, we have to cut down on these fun activities, the gathering, the trips, the functions. That, yeah. that I mean, it, it comes back to what I earlier also, also said. We can't just be saying, oh, it's government's job, it's that person's job, this person. We all have a responsibility. We still have to stick to that that little uh, advice that you have been giving from, from the get-go. Wear a mask, wash your hands, keep your distance. And this time, the fourth one is get vaccinated as soon as possible. Thank you very much, Professor Neelika Malabige. Uh, for coming up and uh, educating our viewers uh, on, on the current status of vaccine, I really appreciate and uh, lots of insights. Well, that's all the time I have for you tonight. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, make sure that you stay positive and test negative. I'll see you next time. Good night.